Hi, everyone. It's been a minute. Today, I want to talk about why I'm voting for Donald Trump in this upcoming election and why I think it's important for all of us to participate this time around. Before I get into it, I need to share a bit of my journey so you understand how I got here. See, I was once very, very liberal. In fact, I voted for Barack Obama back in 2008, believing deeply in his vision for hope and change. However, by the time the next election came around, I didn't vote. I was disillusioned, disappointed that many of his campaign promises, especially those around universal health care, never really delivered. Back then, I didn't have health insurance, and even when Obamacare was introduced, it was still too expensive for me to afford. To this day, I've spent significant parts of my life without health insurance, and currently, I'm still without it. In the 2016 election, I really couldn't bring myself to support Hillary Clinton. She felt like an establishment candidate who didn't offer real solutions, just a puppet to lobbyists with no genuine agenda. When I learned about how the Democratic primary was rigged against Bernie Sanders, something confirmed by leaked emails from Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the former head of the DNC, I grew even more skeptical of the party I once supported. Despite my doubts about Hillary, I couldn't vote for Trump back then either. His rhetoric felt harsh. And in retrospect, I had bought into many of the narratives pushed by the mainstream media. So I cast my vote for Jill Stein instead. Now, I remember election night 2016 vividly. Living in New York City, I went out to capture the energy of the moment at Rockefeller Center, hoping to film a documentary and expecting Hillary to win. What I experienced instead was the shock of watching Trump take the lead and eventually win. The reaction in Manhattan was intense. People were literally losing their minds, and I saw liberals confronting and attacking conservatives, despite what the media had told me about who the quote-unquote bad guys were. That night was the real eye-opener. In the first year of Trump's presidency, I was still largely opposed to him, even experiencing some symptoms of what people nowadays call Trump derangement syndrome. But as time passed, things started to shift. The blatant collusion between the mainstream media and the Democratic Party became harder to ignore. Two stories stood out. The media's vilification of Nick Sandman and the Covington Catholic kids and a fabricated Jesse Smollett hate crime hoax. These stories made me question the media's motives. Around this time, I noticed the rise of figures like AOC and the Squad, whose extreme progressive ideologies began to push me further away from the left. Coming from Brazil, a country that has suffered extensively from the consequences of socialism, I knew firsthand how detrimental those policies could be. Quietly, I began to consume more conservative media, listening to voices like Ben Shapiro, Rush Limbaugh, but I kept it to myself. Living in Los Angeles, I feared being outed as someone who leaned conservative conservative. It felt like a career killer for anyone in the acting or writing industry. Friends who noticed warned me that my career could be over if the word got out. By the end of 2019, my YouTube channel started to grow and then the global pandemic hit. The shutdowns, mandates, and what felt like a chaotic approach to governance made me resent Trump at times, especially when he deferred to Fauci and the medical establishment. The travel ban he instituted meant I couldn't see my family who lives abroad for two years. The constant chaos, the mandates, the vaccine roll out only made things worse. I held out as long as I could, but when LA started reopening and vaccine cards became necessary to do basic activities, I got my first dose. The second dose came only after a collab request requiring proof of vaccination. Personally, I didn't trust the development process of these vaccines and still have my doubts. By the 2020 election, my disillusionment with Trump and my lack of belief in Joe Biden as anything more than a party puppet led me to abstain from voting. The events of January 6th solidified my frustration and made me swear I'd never support Trump again. But in hindsight, that decision has become my biggest political regret. Since Biden took office, the decline has been staggering, from skyrocketing grocery and car prices to inflation and interest rates that put home ownership out of reach. It feels like we're teetering on the edge of an undeclared depression. That's why I'm determined not to make the same mistake twice. About two years ago, I started to come back around to Trump, particularly as I saw how Democrats weaponized the justice system against their opponents. This time, I refused to hide my support. Voter suppression tactics aimed at making Trump supporters ashamed of their candidate won't work on me anymore. So I've already cast my early vote for Trump, and I encourage you to consider doing the same. If you, like me, grew up with values they used to be championed by the Democrat Party, I'm here to tell you that party no longer represents us. It no longer exists. They put forward a candidate who stands for nothing and whose positions shift with the political winds. Kamala Harris's recent contradictory ads about the Israel-Hamas conflict are just one example of how she'll say anything to get your vote and do the opposite when she's in power. From saying she's a gun owner to saying that she's going to run a gun buyback program to a litany of other hypocrisies, it's evident that none of her promises are going to materialize, and it's clearer than ever that this is not a party looking out for the American people. A vote for Kamala Harris in the current Democrat Party is a vote for for more of the same decline, but a vote for Trump is a vote to bring back a prosperous, 
and powerful America, the nation that people around the world dream of joining. It's also a vote for a unity party that welcomes Democrats who believe in the true American values like RFK Jr., Tulsi Gabbard, and others supporting a future for America that transcends party lines. With that said, I'm back from my break and ready to post more consistently. Let's navigate these political and social events together. Take care. Peace.